Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting video tutorial today and in this video I'm going to talk about Salesforce Code Analyzer. Now this video is going to be a little bit different than most of the videos I have done and uh, in this video we're going to talk more on improving your code, improving your delivery, uh, best practices that Salesforce offers, what is PMD, CPD, all these things we are going to talk about. So let's get started. Now, before going into the whole tutorial, I want to talk about some something called best practices in Salesforce. So whenever you're going to write any Apex code, LWC code or Visual Force or any code in Salesforce, you have to always make sure that your code is following the best practices or the Salesforce standards are there. OK, and there are lots of things. For example, there's something called PMD, which is basically uh, programming mistakes detector. Then we have CPD, copy paste detector. Uh, a lot of things are there. And when you write a code, you are definitely going to write a code as per your understanding, as per your experience. Again, if you are an experienced person, you know exactly what to do. Again, Salesforce is pushing a lot of releases and every release, they basically introduce something new. And uh, uh, as you can see, this is a basically example class right now I have. And in this class, there are lots of things which are not as per best practices. Okay, for example, there is this if, uh, if statement here, which is nothing, which is not going to execute anything. Uh, even if it's a uh, uh, condition satisfied then we have uh, something called your customer name which is not being used okay then customer name one again this is not a good naming convention one two three it's not a good idea uh, again you can see capital name here is it's gonna um, um, basically capitalize the null uh, null value here which is not going to work basically it's going to fail somewhere in uh, in your code and uh, apart from this uh, for this uh, public without sharing with class that is not there obviously as i mentioned uh, we don't have any security enforced here or user uh, context for the circle so all these things are very basic things actually again the very 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 basic thing is there is no description for any uh, method here okay these are these are the two methods even the class description is not there so Again, to understand what is the best practices, I found a really interesting uh, uh, repository here on GitHub. Okay, so this is a repository by Trailhead app from Salesforce, and uh, this Apex Recipes re uh, repository has some amazing code actually that you can refer always. So let me go into the Force app here, and I'll go to the classes here. So I was talking about some Sockel, basic Sockel for example. So we have data recipes here, we have DML recipes, we have Sockel recipes. So let's go into Sockel recipes. As you can see here, we have this description that is missing from my class. We have the description for the method that is also missing from my class. For example, what this method is going to return, uh, if you need the parameters or something, um, if you, uh, again, you can see here, we have with user mode here, we have uh, with sharing as well. So all the security policies, whatever security permission set profile securities you have given, that's going to get applied basically here. And uh, you can see we have again different methods here with different data. So again, these are very, very basic things that sometimes we miss. OK, and if you're an experienced person, you have to do some code review for your from your juniors. So now if let's say you have 10 files, how you are going to do this. So this is where you can leverage the Salesforce uh, code analyzer. Now the Salesforce code analyzer actually have few things. For example, again, this is the architecture I'm going to talk about. Uh, this code analyzer, it's going to figure out, it's going to run all the PMD rules you have. You have ESLint, you have uh, RetireJS, you have CPD is nothing but copy paste detector. PMD is nothing but programming mistakes de uh, detector. And you have uh, some rules as well. So, uh, so this architecture, I'm, I'm not going to go into much technical part. I'm going to leave this link in the description or comment section, most likely so you guys, you guys can go through the whole architecture part here again. But if I have to talk in short, it's just going to run all the Salesforce best practices, uh, all the severe security issues that your code might have, um, uh, for all your files. Okay. And it's going to generate a report and that report you can refer and you can fix all these issues. So to install this uh, to install this whole thing, you have to install one extension. So we have Salesforce. Um, let me check. You have Salesforce Code Analyzer. So you have to install this extension. Once you install this extension, okay. I I'm assuming that you have already authenticated your VS Code and everything. If you haven't, I have created a video to uh, write how can you develop and authenticate your VS Code. Um, 
uh, with your Salesforce org. So there should be some link on the top, uh, some I button or maybe link in the description somewhere. I'm going to put it and you can go through that. So uh, coming to this, after installing this extension, you have to install the plugin as well. So this is a plugin for basically Salesforce CLI again. So you have to install this uh, plugin via this link. I'm going to put this in the description. I'm going to put the link in the description as well or I'm going to put as uh, the uh, installation command as well. Okay. So once you install this and, and uh, you will need some prerequisite for this prerequisite is going to be your CLI. Okay. Salesforce CLI and uh, apart from this we have different engines as well. So this will come pre-built okay, there. So you don't have to worry about this. So now let's talk about how can we actually, you know, leverage this extension while uh, your development. So let's say you have developed your class and you have, uh, you want to basically identify what are some issues, potential issues that, uh, what are the areas of improvement as well. And if there is any severity or uh, issue with your with code. So uh, you have this scanner run command here. Okay, you guys, you guys can go through all these commands as well. I'm going to give you the easy ready-made command and uh, that you can always copy paste. So I already have my org here, org setup here, and I can basically right click on my file. For example, this is the same class I have. I can right click on this and I can uh, select this option, scan selected files folders or with the code analyzer. Okay, this is one option I have, or let's say I have to uh, uh, run for the whole folder here okay the whole folder it has the application flexi pages whatever everything what are what the code is there i have this command okay i'm just gonna do one thing i'm gonna, I'm gonna create a new thing a new uh, file here okay you can see we have sf scanner run which is the same thing i'm copying from here okay sf scanner run this is the command we have then we have format so you can actually export the results into any format you have xml json uh, html they have added html support as well so that's what i'm doing right now i'm out uh, i'm gonna uh, uh, keep the output as HTML here and uh, on the output file name you can just put any name here whatever the name you want and the target and the project directory so this is what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna right click on the folder whichever I want and I'm gonna copy the relative path and that's what I'm gonna paste here okay so uh, this is the simple configuration uh, that you can do you have multiple options again here if I go into the flags here okay you have your category you have engine you have different categories uh, you have uh, severity also you have uh, ESLIN config you have JSON normalize again tons of things because you, you guys can go through these flags okay I want you guys to go through this flag we do have something called uh, DFA rules by default okay so these DFA rules I haven't explored much into this but you guys can explore this is related to something called graph engine they have okay so this dfa will have something different okay so scans the code base with dfa rules by default okay i usually run this scanner run always most of the time and uh, later i haven't explored this but you guys can go through i want to keep this tutorial short okay right now so um right now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna run this command what this command already i have i'm gonna put this command in the chat so you can just copy paste this command and paste it always I'm assuming that right now at the moment you have installed the extension here the code analyzer extension and uh, you have also installed through this um, uh, apart from that extension you have to install this plugin as well for the SFDX CLI okay so I'm assuming you have installed this one as well you can also cross check if it is successfully installed or not most of the time it might give you issue uh, so for that you have to take care of your Java thing and uh, what I'll suggest is you can um, go through Adobe TM uh, JDK okay so let me see okay whatever the JDK I have here operating system let's say Windows architecture I have 64 package JDK so I will suggest you guys to install this uh, JDK version and um, from Adobe TM okay and uh, your uh, CLI should work fine because I faced some issues and I installed this and it worked fine and uh, I was able to install the extension it's gonna give you some issues if you don't have the proper Java version now let's let's hit the command okay I have this command I'm just gonna copy paste it I'm gonna uh, copy paste it here and once I copy paste okay it should run the um, whole scanner here and as you can see we don't really have any file here at the moment output file and you can see we have some violations here okay and uh, we have probably pmd 33 violation eslin we have 31 violations we don't have any violations in retard.js probably we'll have to configure that later 
and uh, you can see we have this code analyzer result html this is the exact name i have given here now what i will do is i'll just open this in the window and uh, i'll open this in my browser as well you can see we have a whole big table right now okay it has some severity like say 5 30 uh, severity 2 severity uh, severity 1 2 3 these kind of severities we have and all i believe these are all uh, aura components are we have some aura components we have some lwc i'm more interested in checking the class here so i'm gonna copy the class name and i'm gonna go back here i'm gonna put this here the name and you can see we have a lot of issues with the class okay for example avoid empty if statements now on line number 27 okay this is the line number we have column and a line as well so line number 27 let's see on line number 27 you can see i have a if statement which is basically empty and i don't really need this so avoid empty block statements also so this empty block we shouldn't be using this empty blocks now it's possible that if you have a very big class you probably are missing few things again variable defined but not used so this customer name is used here but it's not used uh, it's defined okay but it's not used anywhere it's not referenced anywhere in the class so uh, this is what most likely you know uh, you are going to see here uh, if we have a lot of very big class you are doing refactoring you are uh, developing something you are enhancing so all these things are here and uh, you can see we have system dot log uh, system of debug also so now let's say if i want to check how can i fix this okay i already know variable defined but not reduced i can simply remove it i don't have to worry about that if i click on this you can see we have debug should uh, should use logging level this is the issue or i will say the rule that has run okay now this has opened the pmd file here pmd uh, uh, apex pmd and you can see we have here system.debug then we have debug level okay so debug level dot debug debug level dot one you have to make sure that you are putting at least some logging level here and then your debug statement so that's how we can basically do here again you can see avoid debug statements is the impact performance so we can uh, we should not be using debug statements if I, if I open this you will we'll find okay all the priority and uh, why you should be basically uh, not using the debug statement everything will find here uh, we have validate crude permission before sockle operation enforce user mode so you can see we have to enforce the user mode here okay so you can see with security enforced this is not this is missing basically i have to put this again probably for sockle we should be having apex sharing violations the very first rule we have here okay so you can see public without sharing or with sharing is not mentioned in my class here that's why i got this issue so again missing apex doc comment so apex doc comment is nothing but the the description i was talking about in this class also right so this description is missing here so all these amazing rules that are going to uh, run through pmd we are going to you know uh, get these rules actually pmd or es lint and again again we have test method also so um, uh, you can see it also gave me some method naming conventions and all these things uh, but again i'm not going to go into that class i just wanted to show you guys uh, that this is a very very powerful tool that you can use to improve your code to use best practices and uh, this is very very important and you can use this in your vs code as well as well as your pipeline so there is a ci cd integration also so uh, if you have a good devops team ask them to use this uh, sf scanner there okay and uh, most likely you are uh, when you are going to deploy your code you will be able to figure out there also if there is any impact as well so uh, this is all guys i wanted to share with you i want I will be posting a lot of videos on best practices as well and some DevOps, uh, API integrations, a lot of things I'm going to post uh, after these videos and uh, so far if you face any issues, anything you can always put a comment uh, here and I will try my best to reply as well. So thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.